Hello, and welcome again to the 2013 Eureka Fest. On behalf of the St. Ursula Academy and Bent team, I'd like to thank all of the people who made this experience possible. Now, imagine you are on a six to eight pill regimen. You take multiple pills multiple times each day. It gets confusing. Well, you're not alone. Actually, according to the New York Times, the average adult over age 50 55 excuse me, juggles six to eight medications daily. And of that, 57% admit that they forget to take medications. Medicines do not work in patients who do not take them. My name is Jessica Setner, and along with Madison Scott, I have served as co-administrative lead. Danielle Hunt, our technical lead, and Beth Ann Lass, our communication lead, will help guide the presentation today. Our team also includes the efforts of Gabrielle Mancy, our financial lead, Caroline Lewandowski, Nira Martin, and our moderator, Ms. Jackie Kane. Last summer, our team met to come up with a problem. We realized that many of our grandparents, parents, and other friends had to deal with the hassle of filling the weekly packs for their medications. We researched pill dispensers online and talked with local contacts, such as Omnicare and Sunset House, to come up with the features of our device that would set it apart from others currently on the market. We will not be giving a full demonstration this afternoon, but we are going to show you how, the, how our device dispenses one pill at a time. If you'd like to see a full demonstration with the electronic components, please stop by the showcase tomorrow evening. Our device alerts users when to take their medications by a light. The light turns on at the time the medication needs to be taken and turns off only after the button has been pressed. Users can set 10 times on two hour intervals beginning at 6 a.m. One key feature of our device is that it allows pill bottles to remain in their original containers. The user simply rotates the frame and loads the pill bottle into the rubber cap. The user just rotates the, um, the device back into place and it is ready to go. Also, the whiteboard front and accompanying notebook allow the user to make notes about their pill taking needs. The most vital feature of our device is singularity, which means one pill will be dispensed at the push of a button. Our device consists of three major components, the frame, the singularity device, and the electronics. Although our prototype has remained fairly similar to the original prototype, we've experimented with many different materials. We decided to make our prototype out of acrylic plastic and had it professionally made by, acrylic, by uh, allied plastics. Excuse me. The whiteboard front um, has lighted buttons and large numbers. Trying to get one pill to fall at a time has been our biggest obstacle and has allowed us to get really involved into the engineering process. We worked with Libby Glass to make our first 3D printed prototype. After troubleshooting and revising the drawings, we worked with the University of Toledo to print out our singularity components. The components of our singularity device include a cone top that rotates, a non-rotating disc, and another disc that rotates along with the top. Also, the outer shell has a balloon top for you to place your pill bottle into. These components together adjust for all the dimensions of the pill and allow one pill to fall at a time. Initially, we did not know very much about electronics and computer programming, but with some guidance, we've been able to write code for a microprocessor. The Arduino tells the motor to turn the singularity device and turns on the light at the scheduled time. But the user does not need to do anything electronically to set up the device. Our community has been a vital resource throughout the inventing process. Through their advice, support, and suggestions, we have come up with a final prototype. For example, we've worked with Omnicare, a large pharmaceutical company based in Toledo, to learn about pill dispensers that are currently on the market, in addition to average pill sizes. We have also worked extensively with the University of Toledo on our overall design, some of the electronic components, and for our 3D printed singularity devices. We've also worked with the engineers at Libby Glass 
It's on our Singularity device and the technicians at ACT Repair, a motor company, to learn about stepper motors and Arduinos. Throughout this process, we've kept our community informed through frequent text, video, and picture updates on our blog, in addition to being featured in many local magazines and on television. As communication lead, it has also been my responsibility to fundraise for the team's travel expenses. To meet our $4,000 fundraising goal, we have secured three corporate sponsors in addition to hosting a 50-50 raffle and concession stand at our school. Throughout the past 12 months, we have become a cohesive, tight-knit team. We have a seven-member, all-female team comprised of students from our school. St. Ursula Academy is an all-girls Catholic school located in Toledo, Ohio, and the STEM club and invent team program are both extracurricular activities. We conduct frequent meetings and stay in constant co communication through text and email. We continue to challenge each other to use our distinct skill sets to reach our team's potential. This prototype has an estimated manufacturing cost of under $100, which satisfies our original goal. Over the past few weeks, we've compiled a list of features we would add to a future generation of our device. These include a small shelf fitted underneath the device to hold a notebook and accompanying prescription information, a larger dip switch system for easier programming, and an adjustable singularity device to account for more percentage of pill sizes. At this time, we would like to open the floor for questions and remind you all that we can have questions tomorrow at the showcase. My question is, uh, it seems that the alert system that you're using to alert people to take their medication is based purely on sight. What happens if a patient who's using that system is blind and can't see the light? Actually, that's a great question, and um, I'll, I'll get to the answer, but first I'm gonna start. One of the hardest parts of this process has been defining who our audience is, because we set out talking to our grandparents and really aiming it at them, but all of a sudden we realized there are so many components we could add to a pill dispenser, and we would have this massive box of everything you could possibly alert and beep and jingle when your pill is ready to be, ready to be taken. But that turned out to not be our goal. So we settled on lights that were bright enough, and we actually took these to our grandparents and had them decide between different buttons and a button separate from a light, and really use our user to guide what our device needed to be. Because as 16, 17, and 18 years old, we can't really say what an adult would want out of a pill dispenser. So going to them, we decided on a light that went with these buttons because it was what our user was looking for. And we did originally have a beep. We steered away from that because of the pro programming aspects. We do not have a programming class at our school. It is a completely extracurricular program. So all of the microcontroller learning we did was outside of school. And the beep just seemed a little too much that we could do to fit into this time slot. But in a future generation, we would probably add a beep. So congratulations, great presentation. I had a question about for the grandparents that have little kids, have you thought about um, child safety for making sure the, that um, little children can't get into the medication? Yes, another great question. Danielle, would you like to? We have considered that aspect, but also with a lot of the other pill dispensers on the market that we've researched, there is no child safety lock on any of those either. So we did tackle that and, or we did overcome that by just saying that it's not for our device, it's not going to be child safe. It can be placed up on a high counter. It would be placed anywhere where you can keep it away from your child. But just like all the other pill, most of the pill dispensers out in the market, they are not child safe. But you do get to keep your, all your pill medications with the device so you don't have to worry about having medication in all different arenas. Yeah, so you mentioned that um, the user isn't going to have to, like, electronically do anything, but, like, how are they letting it know, like, when they, how frequently they need to be taking that medication and at what time? Like, how do, yeah. Okay, uh, Danielle, would you like to talk about our dip switch system and the electronics? Yes. So electronically, as in with all the wiring and everything, the user does not need to set any of that up. It'll already come together once they receive the device. But there will be dip switches on the back. And a dip switch is just a little 
I guess, keyboard that has 10 little switches on it and just simply an up and down switch. It will have 10 different times on it starting at 6 a.m. And so 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m., so on. And the user will simply, we have a little pen here because they are kind of small. And for future generations, we'd like to find a larger dip switch, but we did heavy searching and could not find any ones that were larger. So your user will simply just flip the switch up. And we realize that uh, some patients will not be able to do that themselves, but that's why we also said our target audience is not someone who, can, who has super forgetful and does not have that capability to do that. So it may require caregiver setup. And I believe we only had time for three questions. So again, stop by the showcase, and we'd love to go more in depth about our device. Mm -hmm. Hug. Can you hug? Can you hug? Can you hug? Can you hug? Okay.